Welcome to another edition of TK's Two Cents. Today, let's talk about dealing with trends and disagreements. We're going to leap right in. So let's start with tweet number one. There's nothing like the freedom you feel when you release yourself from the pressure to make an official public statement about every topic that happens to be trending. Let's talk about the fear of being irrelevant. One of the fundamental human needs is the desire to feel seen and heard. No matter how much tough talk we might make of not caring what the world thinks, we all have a basic need for validation. And our interactions on social media are no exception. When people like the things that we share, when they share them with others, when they comment and tell us how much value it created for them, that feels good. And it is possible to become so addicted to that good feeling that when it's taken away or when it just doesn't show up at all, you start to feel alone. And one of the ways this manifests is when things are trending. And when the things that are trending are things that we are perhaps uninterested in or uninformed about or just not familiar with, and it feels like the whole world is talking about something and we're not a part of that discussion. And we began to experience that FOMO, that dreadful fear of missing out. Oh my gosh, like everybody's talking about the uh, silver. Everyone's talking about uh, AMC stock and, and I don't know anything about that or that's not my field or that's not my brand. Well, I guess if I want to stay relevant, I've got to find a way to force fit some kind of message on that particular thing. Now, before my message becomes a distraction, I want to make something very clear. I do not think there is anything wrong with enjoying the trends. I don't think there's anything wrong with letting what's trending challenge you to think deeply about how the world around you might be changing. Or uh, I have no problem with trends encouraging you or inspiring you rather to study so that you can learn about these things. So if you see everyone talking about silver, leading things like sound money or how the markets work, that's really awesome. What I'm addressing here is this pressure that many people feel, this, this pressure that if they don't talk about the things that are trending, if they don't weigh in with a personal official statement, they're going to fade away into irrelevance and no one will respect them as a thought leader or no one will like them anymore and will move on to something else. And that's a very frightening way to live. And it's a very ineffective way to live. And I think seeing that requires us to make a distinction between what is classic and what is hot right now, between what is important and between what is, you know, sensational. There are many things in life that stand the test of time, but many of those things are not trending. I'll give you an example with music. Let's take names like Frank Sinatra, Ella Fitzgerald. Let's take names like John Coltrane, or let's take in writing Hemingway or, or Shakespeare. If you were to study writing, or if you were to study music, these are names that you would be familiar with. These are names that people are going to be talking about 50 years from now, 100 years from now, but none of those names are trending. None of those names are hot right now. The only way those names are gonna trend is if maybe some famous actor who's popular right now makes a movie about one of those figures, then they'll be trending again. But for the most part, they're not trending. And yet every generation finds value in the works of these people because there's some quality about their work that stands the test of time. There's some quality about their work that transcends the whatever it is that's buzzworthy today. And what is that quality? That quality is consistency, that quality is self-authenticity, that quality is sincerity, and that quality is value creation. The best way to remain relevant isn't to go around chasing headlines out of a fear that people will stop liking you if you don't weigh in on every trend. The best way to be relevant is to focus on the things that are consistent with your calling. Because the world not only needs to keep up with what's trending, the world also needs people who are there to remind us of the things that matter, even when those things don't provide us with a sensational headline. 
So maybe your thing is talking about money and helping people get out of debt. Maybe your thing is talking about health and pay, helping people get more physically fit. fit. Maybe your thing is talking about organization and helping people more uh, more effectively manage their time and their energy and their attention. Maybe your thing is helping people declutter so that they're not overwhelmed by the stuff in their lives and they are ruling the stuff rather than having the stuff rule them. Whatever your thing is, if it is something that excites you, if it is something that makes you come alive, if it is something that feeds into your why and makes you get out of bed in the morning, you do not need the confirmation of the what's trending section in order to know that the world needs you to show up for that. And if there's something that's trending and you have a genuine way to connect that with the work that you do, have at it, go for it, don't feel guilty about it. But if there's something that's trending and it doesn't interest you, or you just don't have anything to say about it, you don't owe the world an apology for that, and you don't need to fear that you are going to lose your value just because you don't pretend to be an expert about something that you're not an expert about. Be yourself, be genuine, and that is the quality that's going to help you stand the test of time. Let's move to tweet number two. When others say, I don't see things the way you do, it might be more of an affirmation than an attack. Another way to hear those words might be, I don't see things the way you do, and that's exactly why we need someone like you. A non-defensive posture is capable of not only changing the people around you, but changing the way that you see yourself and the unfoldment of your life. When you have a conviction, when you have a calling, or when you have a concept that you want to share with the world and people respond to that by saying, eh, I don't really get it. Or, you know, that doesn't really move me in the way that it moves you. Or, you know, I just don't quite see it that way. That might be confirmation that you are a unique, irreplaceable, unrepeatable person who has value to offer to the world that no one else can bring to the table. It is so easy to resent people for not seeing things the way that we see them, to get angry at them for not feeling the same emotions of passion when we share some, some matter of conviction. But the fact that other people don't see the world the way you do is a reminder for why we need people like you. Can you imagine how terrible music would be, how terrible art would be, how terrible literature would be, how terrible the world of business and enterprise would be if everyone had your taste and your ideas and your convictions or my taste and my ideas and my convictions, the world would be horrible. What makes this world exciting is we all have different experiences, different perspectives, different interests, different tastes, and we all have the freedom to bring those things to the table. So the next time you feel like you're weird because you enjoy things or you're interested in things and other people don't get them, don't take that as an attack don't react defensively, but instead step back and ask yourself, how might this be evidence of a unique form of value that I can bring to my world? Your uniqueness is an asset, not a liability, and other people's disagreements with you confirm the reality and value of that uniqueness. Hey, y'all, that's all I got to say for today. Hope you enjoy the show. If you get value out of these TK's Two Cent sessions, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and feel free to share with a friend, someone else that you think might benefit from it. And don't hesitate to leave comments as well, letting me know things that you would like to hear me talk about in the future, or if you got any questions for me. All right, y'all, have a fantastic week.